Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about five editing tips that work on every single photo. Now the extent to which you use these tips will of course vary because every photo is different, but these five different tips, this approach, if you will, works on every single photo. Let's get into it. I've got this photo from Southern Utah where I was recently at a conference and you know, it's a great sunset. It's an interesting looking uh, hoodoo. It's called a hoodoo, a toadstool hoodoo in fact. Um, interesting formation, all that kind of stuff, but I want to do some things. And for me, the first thing is I want to get my canvas set. So for me, that's Crop AI here in Luminar Neo. Now, ask 100 photographers, 50 of them might say, I crop at the beginning. The other 50 might say, I crop at the end. For me, I like to get my canvas set. I kind of already know what I want to include and exclude up front. So for me, I tend to crop most often at the beginning. Do whatever you like, right? It, this is something that I, I think is very specific or particular to each person's style. But the point is, photography, you know, we're obviously including things that we want to include, but we're also trying to exclude certain things that may not uh, help the composition or may in fact hinder the photo. For me, it's some of that grasses and stuff down below in the bottom. And what I want to do is really focus in here on that uh, toadstool hoodoo and get rid of some of the distracting elements in the bottom of the frame. And this crop helps me do that. So for me, the first thing is get your canvas straight before you start editing. Now, the second thing for me is getting the light right. And these are essentially what I call global edits. Now, I did a video recently I'll link to there talking about global and local edits and how you approach those. But in this case, I want to kind of balance the light and I start by using Develop Raw. So let me make my adjustments and then we'll talk about that. Okay, here we are in Develop Raw. I've made these adjustments. And for me, this is really about, like I said, kind of balancing the light, but also helping with the composition a little bit. Let me talk about that. Basic contrast, highlights and shadows kind of stuff. I did a slight S curve. And by the way, if you're not familiar with how the curves tool works, also did a recent video about that. Feel free to check that out. It can be intimidating, but it's really not that hard. Slight adjustment to temperature and tint actually made it slightly cooler, even though I am going to pop a little bit of the uh, sky for that sunset, which was quite pretty. I'll do that in a minute. And a little bit of sharpening, but also transform. I took the vertical slider slightly to the left. And if I reset that, you will see because it's a wide angle lens and I was kind of close and I'm looking up, it looks as though that hoodoo is slightly tilting backwards. And this is part of kind of the same thing I did in step one with the crop is kind of getting that canvas straight. And for me, transform helps with that. So if I look overall at develop, I go from that to that, which I think is a nice improvement, but I'm not quite done. The second piece for me of this step number two, which is kind of doing your light adjustments or global edits is super contrast. Okay, I've made my adjustments here in super contrast. That's what it looked like before. And that's what it looks like now. Again, slight adjustment to the light. This is a global edit. So that is really step two, balance the light. And I do that with two tools. That's develop raw and super contrast, which really is my global editing approach. So step one was cropping for lack of a better word and getting the canvas straight. Step two were global edits, which actually because of that slight adjustment in the verticals was also kind of complemented what I did with the crop to straighten up the photo. So get the canvas straight, balance the light with global adjustments. And now we're going to jump into step number three. Now, step number three for me is about masking, or in other words, what I like to call local adjustments. Again, talking about that previous video that I referenced, uh, global edits and local edits, they're very important to get the, uh, the edit dialed in, for lack of a better word, to be very targeted and specific. And that's what this section is all about. So for me, what I want to do is essentially use some structure AI, some accent AI, and make some slight adjustments to the color. Let me get those set up and then I'll walk through what I did. Okay, so I'm in the middle of my adjustment in structure AI. And the first thing I've done is add a radial gradient. As you can see, I want to pop a little bit of structure in that area, but I also want to go in with a brush and make sure that I'm painting in a little bit on this hoodoo as well. So let me complete that. Okay, there you go. I just added a little bit of brush. So you can do that with a radial or linear gradient, uh, and then you can come in with a brush to add to it or uh, subtract from it. So I'm a little bit off on the top. This is a demo, but I've got my mask in place. And what I want to do is go into the adjustments and in structure, I'm adding a 42 or so, like low 40s here. And all that's really doing is just popping the intensity, kind of the crunch, as I like to call it, in those sections because it's dry earth, it's rock. I mean, it just needs a little bit of crunch. I think it looks better that way. So there it is before that adjustment. 
and there it is now. You will also notice that Structure AI, and I talk about this a lot when I mention Structure AI, it adds a little bit of brightening, which helps overcome some of the darkness in those areas. So I've got that set. Now I want to take this mask. So I'm going to go into the masking tool and go to Mask Actions and Copy. And now I'm going to go into Accent AI and paste that mask to use the same mask in the same place. And my adjustment amount here is going to be a 25. So again, just copied and pasted the mask because again, I'm accentuating or accenting with Accent AI the same stuff that I just did Structure AI with. So there it is before and there it is now. Again, a little bit more intensity and it just helps pop that area, which I think looks quite nice. Now, while I'm doing my local adjustments, there's a part of the photo that I don't really like at all, and that's all this yellow stuff. As you can see, it was sunset, really golden hour more accurately, and the sun was just beaming on that area. So what I want to do is tame that a little bit because it's just too intense, and frankly, it's a little bit distracting. So I'm going to use develop for that, and I'm going to go into masking, and I'm going to get a brush mask and make some adjustments. Okay, brush mask has allowed me to isolate that area, so that is finished. And now what I want to do is just reduce the exposure. And while I was at it, I also pulled down the saturation and vibrance and actually changed the temperature too. So for me, it's about removing that really distracting part of the photo because it was too bright and too intense in terms of color. So it looked like that. You can just see how bright and saturated that is. And now it kind of fades into the background. And that, again, is a part of this section of the video, item number three, where I'm doing local adjustments or targeted adjustments to specifically control certain parts of the photo so that I can remove either distracting elements or accentuate things. The first part of this was adding structure and accent AI to that foreground on the left, this uh, dry cracked earth and that hoodoo. And the second part of this local adjustment section was reducing the intensity of that yellow hill or mountain in the background because it was just too much. Okay, section number four for me is really approaching color. So I did global edits, which is really about the light. I did local edits, which is in this case really about the detail. I like to kind of do light and then detail and then color in my edits. So light was the beginning with develop raw and super contrast. The local edits and the detail was really structure AI, accent AI, and a little bit of uh, color reduction in that background there as a local edit. And then this piece is about controlling color overall. So the first thing I want to do is go into the saturation of the orange and pull that down just a little bit because that hoodoo uh, is already rather orange, but also with that sun hitting it, the top of it is just getting really intense. So there it is before and there it is now. I didn't really have to do a local adjustment because the orange everywhere in that little hoodoo and all that was just too much. So you could mask that in if you need to, but it didn't feel like I needed to here. And now that I've done that, I want to go into Color Harmony, and I'm going to go into Mask, and I'm going to go Mask AI, and what I want to do is grab that sky and just do a little bit of color work in the sky. Okay, there's my sky mask, and so what I want to do is go into Adjustments, and in Brilliance and Warmth, I'm going to do about a 5 on Brilliance and a negative 5 on Warmth, and then in Color Balance, in the highlights, I'm going to do about a 9 here on the red. I'm just trying to pull up that sunset look a little bit, and I'm going to do a little bit of magenta, like a negative five. This is really slight overall. But if you look at the before, there's the sky beforehand. And the after just got a little bit more of a sunset look. And overall, just a little bit, to my eye at least, a little bit better color look. So that was step number four, which is really dealing with the colors. And yes, those colors were kind of like local adjustments. The orange is specifically just in that hoodoo. And then the stuff that I just did here in Color Harmony with Brilliance and Warmth and Color Balance was really just in the sky. So that technically is also a local adjustment, and I recommend being targeted. But my point here on calling out color as a fourth section as opposed to part of the local adjustments is that I do color later in the edit. And that really helps me, I think, because if you go and adjust contrast and things like that, that really pops the colors. And so I tend to do color later as opposed to earlier in my edit because it can be thrown off, I guess, for lack of a better word, based on other adjustments that you make in the photo. And then the fifth thing I like to do and my fifth step for really making an impactful photo edit is to do kind of a global touch up at the end. So for me, that's going back to develop. And here I'm going to add a little bit of uh, smart contrast. And I slightly pull down the highlights and pull up the shadows. That's pretty minor overall, but I like to come back and do kind of a global 
overall kind of edit, for lack of a better word. So I kind of start global, and then I kind of go local, and then I tend to come back and do global again. This is a touch-up edit, and honestly, you may not see a huge difference. I can notice it, but it might be a little harder over video. But that's what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like now, just a tiny little bit. And then one other thing I want to do here, just as a global kind of touch-up edit, is using Mystical. And I'm going to go about a 25 here. And then on Shadows, I'm going to slightly lift that because it does create a little bit more shadow. So I'm slightly going to lift that so that I don't completely hide things in shadow that I want you to see, which is really that foreground, for, uh, for lack of a better word. But if you look at the before, there it is, and the after, it just adds a little bit of mood, I think, a little bit of mystery, I guess, as a mystical filter does, and that completes my edit. So it's really five things, right? The first one is cropping, and then I go into the global edits, which is about light. I go into the local edits, which is about masking, I go into color after that, and then I tend to do global edits at the end as kind of a touch-up, kind of finishing um, off, if you will. In many cases, that will also include a vignette. It doesn't in this photo, but if you look at the before, you can see slightly leaning back. Of course, the crop is still there, but uh, that's what it looked like before, and with all these edits, I feel like I've really popped the light, controlled the color in specific areas, controlled the detail in specific areas, and ended up with a much better final result. Those are the five things I like to do and five editing tips that I use that work really on every single photo. Hope it helps, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, check out that one. I think that'll give you some more insights. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another one. You guys take care, and until then, adios.